Hello students, having seen enzymes as tools of genetic engineering, in this lesson we are going to see cloning vectors as tools of genetic engineering. You can recall the points on genetic engineering. To introduce the ease lesson, techniques used for manipulating prokaryotic as well as eukaryotic DNA witnessed a remarkable development during the later part of the 20th century. The deliberate modification in genetic material of an organism by changing the genetic material directly is called genetic engineering or gene cloning or genetic manipulation and is accomplished by several methods which are called recombinant DNA technology. Such techniques include breakage of a DNA molecule at two desired places in order to isolate a specific DNA segment and its insertion in another DNA molecule at a desired position. The product thus obtained is called recombinant DNA and the technique is often called genetic engineering. You can recall the points once again. To overview, recombinant DNA techniques are used to isolate and clone single copy of a gene or a DNA segment into an indefinite number of identical copies. The production of clones is possible because vectors like plasmids, phages reproduce in a host bacterium such as E. coli in their usual manner along with foreign DNA insert so that the inserted DNA will also replicate successfully with the host DNA. The technique is called gene cloning and the vectors that is the carrier molecules used for this purpose are called cloning vectors. So what do you understand now? A cloning vector is a DNA molecule which is used to form the vector that carries foreign DNA into a host cell capable of replicating inside a prokaryotic cell for example bacteria and produces many copies of itself and the foreign DNA. Thus, the DNA into which a foreign piece of DNA is cloned is called a vector. So, vectors introduce foreign DNA into the host cells. Now, you are able to understand better, isn't it? So, where it is replicated autonomously, this is takes place in large quantities. An example of a vector is plasmid and of course, you can include cosmids and East artificial chromosomes. Vectors are often recombinant molecules containing DNA sequences from several sources. So what do you think are the properties of a good cloning vector? A vector should be able to replicate autonomously. A vector should be ideally less than 10 kb in size. A vector should contain multiple cloning sites. It should contain a genetic marker, at least one for selection. It should be easily reintroduced into the host cells. It should have the ability to integrate either itself or the DNA insert it carries into the genome of the host cell. Minimum amount of non-essential DNA to optimize the process of cloning. It should be easily isolated and of course purified. It should contain at least suitable control elements that is promoter, operator and of course ribosome binding sites. What are the various types of cloning vectors? A large number of cloning vectors are available and choosing the vector may depend on factors like size of the insert, copy number, cloning method. Large insert may not be stably maintained in a general cloning vector especially for those with a high copy number. Therefore, cloning large fragments may require more specialized cloning vector. The vectors used for cloning have several different features that may vary in their genome complexity, ease of manipulation, selectable markers and the size of DNA sequence that can accommodate. That is what you understand as insert DNA capacity. These vectors have been developed from 
natural sources such as bacterial plasmids, bacteriophages, or combinations of elements of these vectors such as cosmids or phagmids. Thus, vectors with the advantage of large DNA insert capacities are usually more difficult to manipulate. So coming to the first vector namely plasmid. What is a plasmid? It is an extra chromosomal circular DNA molecule that undergoes autonomous replication inside the host bacterial cell. It is used for cloning limit ranges between 0.1 to 10 kb of DNA size. What is a phage? A bacteriophage vectors are derivatives of bacteriophage lambda, DNA molecules which is linear and segment of DNA do not contain essential genes that can be replaced with foreign DNA without disrupting its life cycle. The cloning limit is 8 to 20 kb. Coming to cosmids, cosmids are plasmid molecules particularly into which specific DNA sequences that is cos sites are inserted. This cos site contain 12 nucleotide bases and of course the cloning limit is 35 to 50 kb. What are phagmids? They are the class of vectors with single stranded capability that combine the features of both plasmids and filamentous bacteriophages. Coming to bacterial artificial chromosomes in short it can be called as BAC which is a bacterial cloning system based on E. coli F factor was designated with a cloning limit of 300 to 350 kb. Coming to yeast artificial chromosomes YAC it's an artificial chromosome that contains telomeres origin of replication a yeast centromere and a selectable marker for identification in yeast cells and the cloning limit is 100 to 2000 kb. Plasmids. Coming to plasmids what are they? We have seen already and they are naturally occurring, circular, double stranded, covalently closed, extra chromosomal DNA molecules that are found in a variety of microorganisms including prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Nevertheless, they depend on enzymes and proteins encoded by the host for their replication and of course transcription. The genome of plasmids ranges in size from 1 kb to more than 200 kb. These plasmids carry genes coding for normal metabolic activities that are beneficial to the host bacterium. These metabolic activities range from degradation of unusual organic substances to metabolic functions that endo the host cells with resistance to antibiotics, toxic substances, heavy metals or bacteriophages. The naturally occurring plasmids may not possess all the essential properties of a suitable cloning vector. Therefore, one may have to restructure them by inserting genes of relaxed replication and genes for antibiotic resistance. Plasmids that are able to perpetuate themselves in Escherichia coli, the bacterium favored by bacterial genesis and molecular biologists have become the favorites of the recombinant DNA technology. Since restriction digestion of plasmids using specific restriction endonucleases can produce fragments with overlapping sticky ends or otherwise it may be called as blunt ends. The artificial plasmids can be constructed by ligating different DNA fragments together. Such artificial plasmids are among the earliest recombinant DNA molecules. These recombinant molecules can be autonomously replicated and hence propagated in suitable bacterial host cells provided they still possess a site signaling where DNA replication can begin and it is also called as the origin of replication or in any diagram you see here you can see the sequence labeled as ORI. So coming to the general characteristics that most general plasmids may be used to clone foreign DNA insert of up to 15 kb in size. One of the earliest and most commonly used cloning vectors is PBR322 plasmid. Other cloning vectors include PUC series of plasmids and a large number of different cloning plasmid vectors are also available. Plasmid vectors are 1.2 to 3 kb in size and it contains essentially 
replication origin sequence as I told you ORI earlier, a gene or a marker that permits selection of transformants and a selective gene which is resistant to antibiotics namely ampicillin which codes for the enzyme lactomase which inactivates ampicillin. Plasmids as cloning vectors, how do you pursue this point? The plasmids could serve as cloning vectors to carry genes. The word vector of course you know, it's used as a synonym for a vehicle or a carrier. Here it considers that a carrier carries the DNA sequence and plasmids which are useful as cloning vectors possess three common features namely replication origin, a selectable marker and a specific cloning site. Here you see the structure of PBR322 plasmid which is very very popular in the molecular biology technique. Genes in the region of origin of replication or ORI region gains the capability of autonomous replication. Genes coding selectable marker confers resistance to an antibiotic. Only those bacterial cells containing the cloning vector with resistance against the particular antibiotic will grow in the presence of the antibiotic. Therefore, growth on antibiotic containing media specifically selects for plasmid containing cells. This is the advantage. Typically, the cloning site is a sequence of nucleotides representing one or more recognition sites for specific restriction endonucleases. Cloning sites are located where the insertion of foreign DNA insert will take place which will neither disrupt the plasmid's ability to replicate nor it activates the essential markers. Endonucleases, we have studied, you can recall the point of this and the action of endonuclease from the previous E lesson. So hope you understand it causes cleavage at a restriction site which opens a circular plasmid or otherwise you can say it linearizes the plasmid so that a foreign DNA fragment can be inserted beautifully in an appropriate place. The ends of this linearized plasmid are joined to the ends of DNA fragment. After that the circle is closed again by the process called ligation which now creates a circular DNA which is otherwise called recombinant plasmid. Recombinant plasmids are hybrid DNA consisting of plasmid DNA sequence and the incorporated inserted DNA elements called inserts. Such hybrid molecules are also called chimeric DNA or chimeric plasmids. The presence of DNA sequences in the foreign DNA insert does not affect replication of the plasmid as the ORI region remains intact after recombination. Hence, the chimeric plasmids can be replicated in bacteria like the original plasmid. Hope you conceived this point. Later, you will be able to understand in a better way how the bacterial cells can harbor one or more copies of a particular plasmid depending on the nature of the plasmid replicator. That is, plasmids are classified as high copy number or low copy number. The copy number of most genetically engineered plasmids is high, say for example 200 or so, but some are lower. Bacterial cells harbor several hundred copies of cloning vectors per cell, thereby large amounts of a cloned DNA sequence can be recovered from bacterial cultures. The enormous use of recombinant DNA technology stems in part from the fact that virtually any DNA fragment or gene can be selectively cloned or amplified using the technique of gene cloning. Certain DNA sequences are difficult to clone which includes inverted repeats, origins of replication, centromeres and of course telomeres. In general, the practical limiting factor is the size of the foreign DNA segment and most plasmids with inserts larger than about 10 kpp are not propagated efficiently due to their size. One of the standard cloning vectors widely used in gene cloning experiments is as I told before PBR322 which is derived from E. coli, coli E1 is 4362 base pass DNA 
and it was named after Bolivar and Roderick who prepared this vector. The first useful feature of PBR322 is its size which can accommodate additional DNA that is less than 10 KB in its size. The second feature is that it carries genes for resistance against two different antibiotics namely tetracycline and ampicillin. And the third advantage is that it has reasonably high copy number. Another vector namely PBR327 derived from PBR322 by deletion of some nucleotides in order to reduce the size of the vector and to eliminate sequences that were known to interfere with the expression of the cloned DNA. Hope you were able to understand PBR322 in detail. Coming to the PUC family of plasmids, they are the series of plasmids that are derivatives of the plasmid PBR322 and are used as cloning vectors and these plasmids assume the name from the University of California series. You can see the structure of PUC plasmid here with a restriction sites and of course with an origin of replication and with the insertion where it can be done. These plasmids with insertional inactivation property are 2700 BP long and possess the ampicillin resistant gene. The origin of replication derived from the plasmid PPR322 and the LAC is a gene derived from E. coli. Within the LAC region, a polylinker sequence with unique restriction sites is inserted. When DNA segments are cloned in this region of PUC plasmid, the LAC gene is inactivated. These plasmids when transformed into appropriate E. coli strain and grown in the presence of isopropyl thiogalactoside and X-gal which is a substrate for the enzyme it will give rise to white or clear colonies. On the other hand PUC having no inserts and transformed into bacteria will have an active lax gene that is Z gene and will therefore produce blue colonies of cleaving substrate thus permitting identification of colonies having PUC vector with the cloned DNA segments. You can see here the blue white selection in E. coli strains using PUC plasmids. Coming to the next cloning vector that is bacteriophage. Phage DNA molecules generally carry several genes that are essential for application including some of the genes coding for components of the phage protein coat and phage specific DNA replicative enzymes. Any modification such as addition or deletion of any of these genes will impair or destroy the replicative ability of the cells. Thus there are more restrictions to modify phage DNA molecules and generally phage cloning vectors are only slightly different from the parent phage DNA molecules. The problems that are associated in constructing a phage cloning vector are actually illustrated by considering the M13 phage. The normal M13 genome size is 6.4 KB in length but most of this is occupied by 10 closely packed genes essential for the replication of the phage DNA. There is single 507 nucleotide intergenic sequence available into which new DNA of interest could be inserted without disrupting any other genes and in fact this region includes the replication origin which must itself remains intact. However, there is only limited scope for modifying the M13 genome. Nevertheless, it will be remembered that the great attraction of M13 is that the opportunity it provides to obtain single stranded versions of cloned DNA. This feature has acted as a stimulus for the development of M13 cloning vectors. The way forward for the development of lambda cloning vectors was available by the discovery that a large DNA segment coming to the structure of a bacteriophage as you see here the structure is like a rocket size and you have studied right from your school days. So the first two types of vector to be produced were 
lambda insertion and lambda replacement or substitution vectors. The genome of a bacteriophage lambda is 48.5 kb linear DNA that is packaged into the head of the bacteriophage. The middle one third of this genome is not essential to cause phage infection. Therefore, lambda phage DNA has been manipulated so that the foreign DNA molecules up to 15 kbp can be inserted into this region for cloning purposes. In vitro packaging systems are then used to insert the chimeric DNA into phage heads which when assembled with phage tails form inactive phage particles. Bacterial cells infected with this recombinant phage DNA produce large number of phage progeny along with the DNA insert before they lyse and large amounts of recombinant DNA can be easily purified from the lysate. Coming to insertion vector, with lambda insertion vector a large segment of the non-essential region has been removed and two arms ligated together. The two popular insertion vectors are lambda GT10 which can carry up to 8 KB of new DNA and another one lambda ZAP2 vector with which insertion of up to 10 KB new DNA can be done. What are replacement vectors? A lambda replacement vector has two recognition sites for the restriction endonucleases which are used for cloning. The two popular replacement vectors are lambda WS lambda B and lambda EMBL4. So coming to the next vector namely cosmids. What are cosmids? The final and the most sophisticated type of lambda based vector is the cosmid. Cosmid was first constructed by Collins and Horn in 1978. They are the hybrids between a phage DNA molecule and a bacterial plasmid and are designed around the fact that the enzymes that are used to pack the lambda DNA molecule into phage protein coat need only the cos sites in order to function. The in vitro packaging reaction works not only with lambda genomes but also with any molecule that carries cos sites separated by 37 to 52 kb of DNA. The DNA incorporated into phage heads by bacteriophage lambda packaging system must satisfy only a few criteria. It must possess a 14 BP sequence known as COS that is cohesive enzyme at each of its ends and these COS sequences must be separated by no fewer than 36 kilo base pairs and no more than 51 kilo base pairs of DNA. Essentially, any DNA satisfying these minimal requirements will be packed and assembled into an infective phage particle. Other cloning features such as ORI, selectable markers and a polylinker are joined to the cos sequence so that the cloned DNA can be propagated and selected approximately in the host cell. Thus, a cosmid is basically a plasmid carrying a cos site. It also needs a selectable marker such as the ampicillin resistance gene and a plasmid origin of replication as cosmids lack all the alpha genes and so do not produce plagues. Instead, colonies are formed on selective media just as with a plasmid vector. Coming to the vector namely phagemid. A phage plasmid vector is able to replicate either a single or double stranded DNA. Phagemids can be induced to produce phage particles containing single stranded DNA. For example, P blue script series which contains a filamentous F1 plasma intergenic region including the origin of replication. Like cosmids, phagemids are also the hybrids of a plasmid and a phage. The plasmids are restricted to intracellular state while the phage particles can exit extracellularly as the infection particles. Korn and Helskinski reconstructed the plasmid of coal E1 artificially and allowed to get packed in vitro into bacteriophage particles. The phage particles containing plasmid DNA were allowed to infect the bacterium. Thus the hybrid vector was termed as phagemid. 
the insertion of plasmid into phage genome is reversible and is called as lifting the plasmid. It produces a phage genome containing attachment site namely ATT and one or more plasmid sites. This new genetic recombinations is referred to as phagemids. The phagemids contain functional ORI genes of plasmid and of phage lambda. One commonly used phagemid is P blue script 11KS derived from PUC19. Artificial chromosomes, genomic analysis and map based cloning of plants and animals require isolation and purification of large sized DNA molecules. Coming to yeast artificial chromosomes, it's otherwise called YAC and they are capable of accepting DNA fragments of 100 to 2000 KBP. Further, such YACs have been transferred into transgenic mice for the analysis of large genes or multigenic DNA sequences in vivo that is within the living animal. Coming to what is known as bacterial artificial chromosomes. It is a cloning system that is a derivative of a particular plasmid found in the bacterium of that is namely Escherichia coli. The BAC is based on a plasmid in Escherichia coli that is termed the F that is fertility plasmid. Coming to shuttle vectors. The shuttle vectors are the plasmids that are designated to replicate in different host systems such as prokaryotes and eukaryotes. A shuttle vector is produced by the addition of bacterial origin of replication in a yeast plasmid. To conclude this lesson on cloning vectors, the molecular cloning allows scientists to not only discover the proteins that are present and their function but also explore what happens in a cell when these proteins are changed. When studying cell division specifically scientists look for proteins that control the beginning and end of cell division. Using the recombinant DNA and the cloned plasmid scientists can direct the replication within the host cells. By manipulating cells with cloning and learning more about specific proteins, scientists can take their research and apply it to a larger scale research endeavors like diseases and of course pathogens.